page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those things that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear a word from Scripture. reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and, sweep, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time, For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. 
a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors, one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, How much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the generation, than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, Who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen.
It's probably been about a year ago now that we read in the news, uh, saw in the newspaper, in the newspaper and on the news reports, uh, that here in the Black Hills, there were thieves who had inserted those credit card skimmers into some area gas pumps so that they could steal people's credit card numbers and PIN numbers and things. And the thing that amazed me about that is how much time, effort, energy, planning, and investment that had to go into such a devious thing. It must have taken weeks, if not months, of planning and getting the equipment, sneaking around at night, inserting these things, going back and retrieving the data, making the fake credit cards, or at least jumping online and buying whatever they wanted with the stolen numbers. There, there seemed to be a lot of energy that was expended on this operation. I even thought that if the person or people responsible for this would put that much work and energy into a real job, they'd probably be very successful. I am both fascinated and repulsed all at once by stories of people who have shrewdly figured out a way to steal or cheat the system. The level of imagination or ingenuity they employ in order to get what they want, it, it's amazing and fascinating, even though disgusting. In today's scripture readings, we see some folks who are a bit meticulous in their thievery. The Old Testament reading from the prophet Amos warns those who trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land by their unscrupulous ways. Amos points out that there are those whose sole focus is on making money. That's why he finds them saying, that's why he finds them saying that they want to rush through the new moon a day when commerce was forbidden. You, do you all remember the blue laws? Do you remember that? Yep, yep. yep, growing up, no commerce on Sunday. Every Everything was closed. God forbid you had a sick baby. Couldn't go to the, you got to go, go to the pharmacist's house and get him off the sofa in order to fill the prescription for the baby. But every place was closed. Well, not anymore, right? There's no more blue laws. So this is what was happening in the day of Amos. Uh, during the day of the full moon, there was to be no commerce. And so Amos points out that they're eager to get through the day of the, the new moon. They can't wait to get back to selling. And, and when they do, in fact, start selling, they've adjusted the balance of the scales so that they tilt ever so slightly in favor of, of the seller. Or they sweep up the chaff along with the wheat. And so they sell this bundle not, as a, uh, not acknowledging that there's chaff and wheat in there when it really ought to be a full, clean, true bushel of wheat with no chaff. They're unscrupulous. When we look at the gospel from St. Luke, we see Jesus tell a story that's a little bit confusing. In fact, biblical scholars have debated for centuries the meaning of this passage because on the surface, it almost looks like Jesus is endorsing the immoral behavior of the dishonest steward. Well, I can assure you, Jesus is doing no such thing. Instead, Jesus is employing a technique that grabs the attention of those listening to him, an oratory device that grabs the listener's attention. Now, I thought about kind of going through the story and explaining every complex detail, but I'm going to cut to the chase today. When Jesus says at the end of the parable, and his master commended the dishonest manager because he acted shrewdly, Jesus is saying something similar to what we might say about the people who put so much energy into putting card skimmers on gas pumps. Jesus is saying, my goodness, can you believe how much effort and energy someone put into obtaining what they want, even if by dishonest means? Now, we know that Jesus is all about proclaiming the kingdom of God. He came to earth to get us to focus on love of God and love of one another. Obviously, being deceitful, stealing, or acting in dishonest ways are in no part of loving God or loving one another. By use of this strange parable, Jesus is giving his listeners and us a message. He's saying, if you put as much effort energy, imagination, ingenuity, and creativity into the biggest payoff there is, and what is the biggest payoff? Eternal salvation. Then you will live forever. And it's not just about stealing. 
It's about anything we put our efforts and energies into. Let me put it into very real terms for you here in 2016. Now, I've got family and friends back home who bust their rear ends, working double shifts at the chemical plants in Louisiana, picking up extra hours after work, even taking on extra jobs, all for one thing, hunting season. <laughs> now, hunting is not bad in and of itself. Working extra hours and double shifts in order to afford the opportunity to go hunting, that's not bad in and of itself. What Jesus would say about this is this. What if that person put as much time, effort, and energy into developing the relationship with God or with getting to church or with some other ministry within the church, with helping neighbor and friend? We are all guilty of putting extra effort into something we love here on earth. But what if that same amount of energy was put into a focus on our own salvation? Now let me be clear. I'm not condemning hunting or anything of leisure. We have to have our batteries recharged. We need hobbies. We need recreation. We need fun things. And it could be anything. It could be golf or LSU football, especially last night. Sorry, Mississippi State fans. It could be caring for the grandkids. Oh, yeah, I went there, Tom. I went there. (laughs) It could be something as joyful as caring for the grandchildren. But if hunting, golf, LSU football, or even the grandkids bring us greater joy and receive more attention from us than God does, then we have a serious problem. In our minds and hearts, fill in the blank. I am happiest when I am blank. I am happiest when I am blank. What comes immediately to mind? Does God or Jesus or the church come to mind? Or is it something more temporal, something more earthly that comes to mind? Now, does this mean that God is not in the deer stand with us? or on the golf course, or with the grandkids, or wherever our leisure activities might take us on any given day, especially a Sunday, of course God is with us wherever we go. Today's psalm says, From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. This simple line is a beautiful metaphor that demonstrates that God is everywhere. From the rising of the sun to its setting, and everything underneath, God is there. But when we retreat unto ourselves, even if we're keenly aware that God is where we happen to be, we must never, ever forget God's people. We are not called to be isolated from our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are to be connected to them. St. Paul's letter to Timothy today begins, First of all, first of all, I urge you, I urge that supplications, Prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone. I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone. Church is one of those places in our lives where we come to find out what's going on in other people's lives. Not in a gossipy way. But it's a place and a time to share our own stuff with them. Again, we can, uh, it's because of the connections that we are able to offer supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings for those in our midst. We can do that at the hunting camp or on the golf course. But if we're too frequently absent from church, we really miss out on the opportunity to find out from each other what supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings are needed, or to share our own prayer needs with others. Our relationship with the divine is not one that is developed and strengthened in isolation from other people. Our relationship with the eternal one must be strengthened through and with one another. When we look at the balance scales of our lives, 
Where does God stack up against the things of this world which hold our attention, our fascination, our time, our effort, and our energy? I am happiest when... The last line in today's gospel has Jesus saying to us, you cannot serve God and wealth. Now, there's a better translation. You cannot serve God and mammon. But we have taken mammon and we have attached to its, to its meaning uh, the notion of money or wealth. But mammon really means anything in which we place our trust. So the translation would read, you cannot serve God and anything in which you place your trust. If we place our trust of joy and happiness in something other than God, then the scales of our lives are not tilted in God's favor. It's tilted in favor of whatever it is that has all of our effort, energy, focus, attention, and time. It's time. It's time to balance the scales of our lives, to tilt it back in God's favor. It's time to sit down and to make a list of all the things we love in this life, all the people, all the places, all the things, all the activities that give us true joy and happiness and life. And if God is not number one at the top of that list, then we have some work left to do. Now the good news is, we'll be back here next Sunday, a week from now, doing this all over again. So we can keep trying. We don't have to give up. My brothers and sisters, we have been entrusted with something very sacred, and it is the gift of faith. This gift of faith is no small thing. What we do to nurture that gift, to grow that gift, to share that gift with others, to exercise that gift, to appreciate that gift, and to make sure that gift does not die out within us, is small in comparison with the eternal glory that the gift promises. Jesus says that if we are faithful in treasuring and preserving this small gift of faith, only then will we be entrusted with the huge gift of eternal salvation. If we squander the small gift of faith on earth, then we will not be entrusted with the larger gift of eternal life. Until we expend as much energy into exercising our faith in Jesus Christ and his promise of eternity as much as we do on the earthly and temporal things that we love, the scales will be out of balance. May our faith lives be deepened and strengthened this week, O Lord. May the coming of your kingdom find the scales of our hearts balanced in favor of you, gracious and eternal God. And may we soon say, I am happiest when I am with you and your people, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us set the scales of our hearts and souls aright by standing and turning to page 358 as we boldly proclaim, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Please turn to page 388. We'll use form four of the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church as they seek a new rector. Lord God, bless them with a good, holy, and faithful pastor and shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially remembering this day tiny Lawrence and Frank Hawk, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, whose loving hand has given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor you with our substance, and remembering the account which we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Using the form of confession found on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty 
God, have mercy on me. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, all visitors and guests who are here with us. I see that Laura Orville has family with her, uh, her son and daughter-in-law, uh, daughter-in-law priest from uh, the Diocese of Maine. So welcome. It's wonderful to have you both here with us. Uh, it's always a pleasure and joy to receive you here. Um, all other guests, you are certainly recognized and, and welcomed as well. Immediately following our service in the parish hall, We'll have an opportunity for refreshments and treats. I hope you'll take the time for us to visit with you and you to visit with us. This past Wednesday, we had quite an exciting thing happen. We had our celebration dinner. We had taken a brief hiatus through the summer, and uh, that proved to be quite a wise decision on the part of the celebration dinner folks. We had 83 people come for dinner on Wednesday night, and if you missed it, you missed uh, Cynthia and Teresa Aldrich's jazz standards uh, playing in the background and a wonderful meal. Uh, caught us a little off guard, so uh, it's kind of a multiplication of loaves and fishes kind of moment, um, kind of cutting portions in half. I don't know if that's how Jesus did it, but that's how we solved the issue. Um, so here's the thing, and here's the challenge. Because we want to be good stewards of the food that we prepare, not knowing how many people are going to show up at the next one, which is September 28th, uh, it's always the second or fourth uh, Wednesday of the month, we're just going to prepare for 80 people and plan that all of you are going to come and join us and be here, and it's going to be wildly successful all over again. Yay! I feel like Kermit the Frog. Yay! We've also instituted evening prayer before each of the, the celebration dinners. It's only on the Wednesday nights of the celebration dinner. Evening prayer starts at uh, 5 o'clock, the dinner at 5.30. We had 28 souls here praying evening prayer with us. I was so humbled and overwhelmed by the generosity of prayer and spirit, so thank you. Sunday school kicked off today. Kids, how was it? Where are kids? Do we have kids here? Well, I see Michael back there. Was it good? Did you have fun? Yes, and we said, oh, there we go, Jaden and, and Gracie Cakes. Was, how was Sunday school? Was it fun? <laughs> Where's Greta? Did you see that, Greta? Good. <laughs> That's about as honest a response as you'll get from a kid. Um, Sunday school is great. <laughs> we need more folks to sign up to take on specific classes and lessons and to serve as teachers and shepherds. Um, uh, I know that the Sunday school program is, is growing and uh, full of energy. So please uh, look out here and see what our needs might be and help us out. Next Sunday is UTO Sunday, the blue boxes, the United Thank Offering that our ECW women collect. They are, um, we're collecting the United Thank Offering boxes next week so that we can bring a check to diocesan convention the following week. Um, so make sure you bring those UTO boxes to church next Sunday. Our vestry meeting, which would be usually scheduled tomorrow, has been postponed. It is next Sunday from 12 to 4. 
four hours of their day off, your vestry is going to be working on bringing to finalization the strategic plan that they've been working on for 18 months. It's an enormous commitment that this whole parish has made, but most especially our vestry members and officers. Would you please pray for them during the coming week and pray that next Sunday as we work together, we might see where the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding our parish. Finally, next Sunday, we will begin our adult forum series. Uh, Canon David Seeger, during his interim down in Florida, um, they used a program down there that he thought was really good and wanted to bring to Emmanuel. It's called the Follow Program. It's a little different than what we've done in the past. There will be a brief video that we'll watch. Then we'll have roundtable conversation and discussion about what we're hearing, what we're learning, and kind of bring our own experience to it. So it's not just me or, or Canon Seeger or anybody else standing in front lecturing like a classroom. It really will be more of a forum approach uh, where we have the opportunity to share our own thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Uh, so I do hope that you'll come and uh, participate with us in that. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. to the choir last week they made their debut their return for the season and I neglected to acknowledge them but you all always do such a beautiful job thank you for your return if anyone would like to join the choir you may run up here right now and join there's no time like the present as we receive the gifts you so generously offered anyone who would like to come to the rail for a blessing may follow the ushers
going out the rail today, which is a wonderful thing. You know, this is something at Emmanuel that I inherited when I got here, and it's a beautiful thing. It's kind of what I preached about today, about praying for one another in times of need. And I'm so grateful for all of you who so willingly come forward to receive blessings. You, as a congregation, are also invited to pray as I pray, too. And you're going to Croatia. Okay. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, where the sun rises and where the sun sets and every place in between, Preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. And may the wedding which they will attend be filled with blessings of holiness and of joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I got that right. It was a wedding. Okay. Square roots were counting on your birthdays. Any other birthdays that were? Bernie's birthday as well. So we'll pray for Barry and Bernie. Thank you. You can hold my hand. Absolutely, darling. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up. Father, a woman with so much faith simply desired to touch the hem of your son's garment, and she was instantly healed. We give you thanks and praise for the gift of healing, for the gift of good news, for the gift of good medical tests and reports, which Kaki has experienced this week. She, like the woman who touched the hem of your son's garment, has received and experienced a healing of physical, emotional, and spiritual proportions continue to bestow upon her, Lord God, your heavenly blessing. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray in thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So you got a lot of things going on, right? <laughs> Anniversary, ill mother, and ill mother-in-law. So why don't you three hold hands, combine hands somehow. Lord God, you saw fit to send your son into the world through the gift of family. And so we ask that you bless this family in health, happiness, and holiness. Lord God, we celebrate with them all of the joys and triumphs, and we walk with them in their moments of discouragement and sadness. Continue to instill in them a sense of faith, hope, and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Lord God, your son Jesus was a worker, a carpenter, just like his father, Joseph. We thank you for the dignity of work. And Lord God, when there are strenuous disagreements among entities. We ask for peaceful resolution, especially for Laura's daughter who is in the midst of a strike. We ask, Lord God, that all sides may be open, that all sides may listen, that all sides may show care and concern for the other. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, prayer of intercession comes up towards you for Aunt Brenda, 
We ask, Lord God, that the good years of remission that she has enjoyed may embolden and strengthen her. And Lord God, as your will is unfolded and revealed, we ask that you give her and her entire family strength to embrace and do your will. If it is your desire, Lord God, bring about a, he a healing, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual, for her and for all those whom she lo who loves her. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Week number two of your 50th. Oh, wonderful. So you, it's a birthday and travel. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, there is much to celebrate in the life of Anna and Aiden, and we offer you them, Lord God, their lives, their experiences, their joys and their triumphs, and Lord God, those things which they hold dear to their hearts, which are troublesome and burdensome, we ask that you help them to lighten the load. We ask for your blessing in abundance that their cup may overflow. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 For a Cubs game? Oh, conference. <laughs> traveling to Chicago. I heard traveling to Chicago, and I just went to Cubs game. But uh, okay, well, <laughs> we'll pray for your safety. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end, from the rising of the sun to its setting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ah, yes. So uh, Janie's surgery is this week. She's been in Cleveland at the Cleveland Clinic for a number of weeks now, and she'll be having, a, hopefully, a, a successful surgery. So we'll be praying. Lord God, the prayer chains among us are strong and bonded and united and lengthy. And so, Father, we ask that this prayer chain extend from here, from our hearts to Janie's hearts, to the doctors and nurses who will tend to her. We ask, Lord God, for a successful surgery and that she may return home to us in safety, in security, and in health of body, mind, and soul. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of my sins. Thank you, Mary Ellen. This is a glorious part of our service called the Great Thanksgiving, the Holy Eucharist. It can be found on page 361 in our Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life, light, and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
however, you're welcome to sit or stand as you are able or more comfortable. <laughs> Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. It is always a privilege and an honor as an Episcopal priest to be able to invite all baptized Christians, regardless of denomination, to receive Holy Eucharist alongside us today. 
If you prefer a blessing, you may fold your arms. I'll be happy to pray over you and with you. We also have gluten-free hosts available today. If that's part of your need, please let me know when I get to your station. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Amen. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Our post-communion prayer is on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.